All right, our first presentation is going to be by Angelo tonight. Angelo, there you are. Come on up, as we're going to start off with a couple of presentations having to do with water. Good evening. Good evening. I think we need the TVs on. Okay, we'll fire them up for you. <laughs> I was here about a month ago talking about uh, water in the Ohio Valley and tonight is just kind of an update on things that have gone on the past the past month. This is a chart that uh, I've used every time I've been here. I'd like to remind you all of the uh, fall in Lake Casita storage starting about 2012 when our rainfall averaged below uh, 10 inches a year in downtown Ojai. And that fall was around 25,000 acre feet. And uh, so long as that kind of rainfall continues, we can expect that kind of drop in the lake. Not much has changed uh, this past month, and I'll get into that. As of October 31st, the total storage in the lake was about 36% of capacity, assuming that there's no sediment in the lake, uh, around 91,500 acre feet. The October de decrease in storage was around 1,880 acre feet. And if you annualize that, out uh, for the year, it comes out around 22,500 acre feet for the year. So far as the demand reduction stages are concerned, I believe we're still looking at stage four coming on in September of 2017 at uh, 75,000 acre feet. And that uh, re reduction stage is an additional 10% of conservation from where we are now, we're at 30% now, 30% uh, below 2013 uh, water use levels. Stage five uh, still looks like March of 2018, which will come on at 65,000 acre feet. And that's where we go to 50% uh, reduction in water use, and that's the most severe stage. And um, in talking with, uh, with Casitas, I think they're, they're pretty nervous about stage five hitting because it's gonna be, it's gonna be a severe situation and a lot of things uh, are in the weep, the water, uh, efficiency and allocation program that Casitas publishes specifies some pretty serious cutbacks when you hit stage five. Um, out of water time, if things continue the way they are with rainfall, and all of this is based on the fact that the rainfall continues at about the same pace. So the out of water time is about April 20 of 21, uh, which is around four plus years. Uh, if things continue the way they are, that the lake will be out of water. Uh, here's the uh, chart of the Ojai Basin. Uh, I was just speaking with Jordan Keir, and uh, he's going to have some updated in information about this. Um, right now it's, uh, well, I can't say right now because I think he has updated information, but it's around 45% uh, capacity, 37,400 acre feet. Uh, and the recharge mechanism largely for the basin is rain. Outflow from the basin is pumping from private wells, pumping for Ojai City use by Golden State and uh, discharge to San Antonio Creek. Discharge to San Antonio Creek occurs all the time, no matter, uh, well, I'm gonna say it's occurring right now, even at our current drought situation at around two acre feet per day, which I believe is significant for a drought condition. That's over 700 acre feet a year that's still running out of the basin, even though we're in a drought condition. Now we have inflow to the basin that comes underground that, does, that is not associated with rain necessarily. So there is replenishment going on for the water that's going to San Antonio Creek. The calculating the amount of water in the basin is a complicated, complicated deal. And again, I was just speaking with Jordan about this and he gave me a brief introduction to some of the formulae required to come up with a estimate of groundwater storage in the basin. This is the cross section of the basin uh, from one of Jordan's reports. And the green, uh, the green portion is uh, called an aquitard, which is a, uh, a layer that restricts water flow through the basin. The white portions are, are alluvial uh, uh, deposits that actually contain the water. So if you look at this cross section, and I think it's about midway in the basin, uh, looking uh, toward the west, it gets complicated because there are, are different layers in the basin that hold water. Another chart, uh, this is uh, kind of like a, a topographic map of the basin, and it shows the different levels to water in the basin. So if you combine these lines that show uh, a distance to water in the basin with that previous chart, you get a three-dimensional image that gets pretty, pretty complicated. 
So the basin, uh, I'm learning as time goes on, the basin is a complicated, uh, complicated situation and certainly can't be taken for granted, granted nor quickly estimated about how much water is in the basin. Uh, the Upper Ventura River ground groundwater basin is at a, a near record low level. Um, things you knew before, there are 149 wells total in the basin and uh, two uh, agencies pumping water out of the basin are trying to. Uh, Ventura River Water District has four wells and only one is pumping out of the basin now. The Miners Oaks Water District has four wells in the basin and none are pumping. Um, Ventura River Water just recently, as I understand it, uh, has gone back on their well completely for supplying their customers. They were drawing Casitas water to supplement their supply, but now they're back on that one well entirely for their customers. <laughs> uh, Miners Oaks is entirely on uh, Casitas water for, for their customers. Their, their wells are not deep enough to get down to the aquifer, which again is at a near record low level. Something I was curious about is how much water does the Ojai Valley actually use? I picked this year, July 1st, 2015 to June 30th, 2016. During that period of time, Casita sold 14,345 acre feet. Where did, those, uh, where did that water go? Uh, 3,776 acre feet went to Ventura. 493 acre feet I couldn't identify precisely, but I believe it goes to some miscellaneous users, perhaps down toward Casita Springs that uh, I could not get a handle on. A surprising amount of water, 2,288 acre feet per year during this period of time, went to uh, the Highway 150 farms uh, west of Casitas. A lot of avocado growers along 150. That water goes along 150, makes a U-turn, comes down the hill, and then comes back up the Rincon to supply those homes along the Rincon. So that's a surprising amount of water. To me, it was surprising to see that much water that goes to Highway 150 and the Rincon area. Um, you subtract these numbers out and it appears that uh, CMD actually moved about 7,780 acre feet uh, to the Ojai Valley. So I moved that over to the right column. Uh, during that period of time, OB, o, the uh, Ojai Basin extracted about 3,300 acre feet. And uh, the wells, uh, when they could pump uh, water during that period of time, that's the amount of water the wells pumped. So we come up with a grand total of a little over 12,000 acre feet that the Ojai Valley used during that period of time. So uh, this benchmark is gonna change from year to year. It's not ex gonna be necessarily exactly 1,200 acre feet uh, that we need absolutely every year, but this is an idea, a scale of magnitude of how much water we need for the Ojai Valley. Uh, uh, a side point down at the bottom, you'll see that during this period of time, the lake decreased by a volume of 21,000, a uh, little over 21,000 acre feet. So obviously we have a large discrepancy between the lake going down by 21,000 acre feet and Casitas only selling 14,000 acre feet. Well, the balance of that water is 6,790 acre feet that went to evaporation. So if you look at the numbers, uh, you've got over 6,000 acre feet going to evaporation while you're selling 14,000 acre feet. So roughly 14,000, or I'm sorry, 40% of the water sold uh, was lost to evaporation. If you want to pick a number uh, to concentrate on, I would look at that 7,700 acre feet, roughly 8,000 acre feet. If Lake Casitas goes dry, that's where we got to find 8,000 acre feet of water for the Ojai Valley. Even during these conditions, the basins uh, seem to be pumping okay. So I think uh, for planning purposes, uh, the basins under these conditions could keep up with their contribution, and, and, uh, namely the 3321, the 782, and the 418. So if the basins keep that up, we still gotta come up with another 8,000 acre feet of water if the lake goes dry. Where is that water gonna come from is, uh, is a great question. Um, I mentioned the last uh, meeting, uh, the sediment study. Again, if there's sediment in the lake, the perceived volume in the lake is decreased by the amount of sediment in the lake. Um, Casitas uh, did uh, send out a request for proposals. All the proposals were, uh, were submitted due back in November 10th. I don't know if they finished evaluation of the proposals, but in, in my last talk with Casitas, that uh, decision on selecting a contractor and funding that contractor should come before the uh, November 23rd Casitas board meeting. So uh, that's, that's a meeting to circle on your calendar if you wanna stop by and, and see uh, how it goes, whether or not the board approves funding for the sediment study. That's the last hoop that'll need to be jumped through. So diversifying water sources, uh, where can we look for water? Uh, 
Here are some points that we came up with. Rain coupled with stormwater capture, the state water project tie-in, which I talked about last time. We have a new item on the list called horizontal bores, and a great acronym for that is they're called HOBOs. And this came up uh, as a result of a study funded by Casitas. Uh, there were uh, 18 points uh, submitted for study. And this uh, horizontal uh, bores, the hobos, came out, I believe, to be number one on the study. Another water source could be desalination or desalting. Uh, there are potentially new subsurface water sources that are being talked about now. And then, of course, there is uh, effluent recycling. Stormwater capture, I, I think in the next uh, couple of months, we're going to see the city of Ojai is going to be taking a larger role in uh, stormwater capture. There's some, uh, there's, there's some actions going on now where uh, I think we're going to see more planning and implementation along with other groups in Ojai to come up with uh, uh, some more movement towards stormwater capture in the Ojai Valley. Um, a lot of water is lost uh, down San Antonio Creek. All of the hard runoff uh, areas in, uh, in the city of Ojai basically run to San Antonio Creek south of us. And when it hits San Antonio Creek in that area, it's uh, pretty much beyond uh, capture of the Ojai Basin. So it's basically water that runs to the Ventura River. State Water Project tie-in. A couple of new wrinkles here. Um, here's a diagram that I went through before. Just a refresher, the 30-inch uh, the line on the left-hand side of the chart is an existing 30-inch line from uh, the Casitas filtration plant down to West Ventura, two or three blocks from the Ventura Mission. Uh, the piping we're talking about is that red blob in the center, uh, seven miles of new piping that's going to go east to the Cayuga system to tie into their lines. Um, we got some new information back or some uh, corroborating information back because of this Casita study that chances are that connection at Highway 118 and Price Road is going to have uh, not enough capability to, uh, to really supply a water like Ventura and ideally Casitas would like to have. So. Uh, a couple of things going on there. Cayegas has offered to increase uh, that 24-inch line to a larger line to uh, handle more capacity. And then there's the option of going three miles further east to tie into the two 30-inch lines that, uh, that Cayegas has. So uh, that is the State Water Project uh, tie-in. Uh, you see to the left is a new entry, the seven miles of 30-inch pipe. Um, that uh, piping is a result of some capital improvement programs that I, I just found that exist in the city of Ventura. And the stated purpose for these transmission lines is, uh, or for these new uh, capital improvement lines is transmission pipe for providing groundwater to the west side in the event both Ventura River and Casitas do not provide adequate water supplies. So the city of Ventura is off and running here, um, already planning on larger east to west lines through the city from uh, and you can see on a chart, th these, this seven miles of 30-inch pipe would be from Satakoy running west, and it'll get to within about three miles of our line, I say our line, the Casitas line that ends up at Olive and Ramona. So the capital improvement programs were for basically, let's see, you add up the numbers, you see 14,500 feet of 30-inch pipe in the one uh, CIP and 5,500 feet thir of 30-inch pipe in the other CIP, so we're looking at about 20,000 feet of new line that's in planning right now by the city of Ventura. So it, w it makes me think, well, gee, what is the city of Ventura thinking? Well, they're thinking ahead. If, if Casitas goes dry, they want to be able to supply water to West Ventura, because right now West Ventura water is coming from Casitas at around 4,000 acre feet a year. So uh, the city of Ventura is moving ahead with the 30 inch line. And, and my contention from the beginning, I think, and, and I believe some others have been that why don't we just run a 30 inch line across the Santa Clara River and hook into the 30 inch lines at Cayegas? Uh, why, if we're, we're going to go to a smaller line, why, in, why install a choke point across the Santa Clara River when Ventura is putting in, putting in 20,000 feet of 30 inch line as we speak? So, anyway, that's. Uh, a subject for further discussion. Uh, getting to the Matillahaw Formation Horizontal Bores, or HOBOs, I love that acronym. Uh, this was a chart that you've seen before, and the geography here is the Santa Ynez Mountains uh, north of Lake Casitas, and on the other side, uh, the Matillahaw Canyon to the right, and the Santa Ynez River Valley to the left. The Matillahaw Formation Horizontal Bores concept uh, is a result of, uh, of information gleaned from drilling the Tecolote Tunnel. 
I don't know if you're acquainted with the Tecolote Tunnel or not, but it was a, a massive tunnel undertaking between the city of Santa Barbara and Lake Kachuma to put a tunnel in to be able to pull water from Lake Kachuma to the city of Santa Barbara. During drilling of that tunnel, and I've read a 1960 Bureau of Reclamation report that is basically a foot-by-foot -foot diary of what it was like to, uh, to drill that horizontal well through the, through the mountains. Uh, it's really an interesting study, it's some interesting pictures. Um, what they ran into during that drilling, they ran into some massive amounts of water came out of that tunnel when they reached a certain sandstone uh, formation. And I'm not a hydrogeologist, so I, I can't really speak all of the right buzzwords uh, about the sandstone, but it was a Matillaha sandstone, and it is believed that the same kind of sandstone is present, water-bearing water sandstone is present in these Santa Ynez Mountains. So the proposal was for horizontal bores, horizontal wells, to go into these mountains north of Lake Casitas and hopefully find in these formations the same quantities of water that is simply residing in these formations that could be tapped and either piped to or drained down uh, the creeks in, into Lake Casitas. Uh, the, the cost estimates range, uh, well, cost, estimates, cost estimates are about $5.6 million per well. Uh, project time is about five years. Uh, yield is maybe 8,000 acre feet per well. So a pretty good yield. Uh, storage estimates are, uh, get, get to be rather large, uh, range from 29,000 to 200,000 acre feet, uh, maybe residing in, in, in these mountains. So at this point in time, the, uh, the Casitas Board has authorized an exploratory study to see if we can find out more definitive information about this potential and hopefully find it out in uh, sooner, than, uh, sooner than five years. So there's definitely more to come about this project. Uh, desalination, we've talked about that before. Uh, there's a great, uh, great meeting going on uh, in the supervisor's quarters on December 1st. Anybody curious about desalination would want to, intend, uh, want to attend that meeting. Uh, one of the presenters is gonna be Callegas. I don't know what, uh, what Susan Mulligan is going to present exactly, but this is a presentation that exists that, uh, that she has given. And uh, this particular study was for a plant near Port Wainimi producing about 90,000 acre feet per year. Uh, the capital cost was going to be around 2.3 billion and it was going to take 15 to 20 years to complete. So obvious, obviously this is a, a, a way, way out there for planning. Um, and, and Cayegas makes no bones about it. This is an extremely difficult technological problem and the permitting process is huge. So uh, permitting, you, permitting takes up most of that 15 to 20 years uh, simply because of the hoops that have to be jumped through. But again, this is a water supply that's not dependent on rain or the uh, state water project. Desalting is another subject uh, that, uh, and the difference between desalting and desalination is the degree of concentrates in the water. Uh, brackish water is much, much less salty. You could consider it a factor of 10 to one less salty than seawater. So it's uh, significantly less expensive to purify brackish water than it is to desalinate seawater. Part of this uh, Casita study was for an Ojai desalter because it's believed that some of the water in the Ojai Basin at some depths is brackish. Uh, so the proposal was brought up. It was not a, a, a high level proposal, but I wanted to mention it because it was brought up as a, uh, for an Ojai desalter. Um, they're talking about a location in the West Central Basin for aquifers below 500 feet that may be brackish. This desalter would pull that water up, uh, purify the water, and, the, uh, and would discharge the, the, the leftover brine into the, uh, into the Ojai Valley uh, sanitation system. Uh, estimated cost for this system is 2.6 to $2.9 million, and it would take a year to complete. And even though this was a lower priority system, I wanted to bring this up just to show you what's going on, to let you know what's going on in the Oxnard Plain so far as desalting is concerned, if you're not acquainted with it. Um, you can see the legend to the right, but that the particular line that run that weaves its way through is is a salinity management pipeline that's being built by uh, Cayegas, and uh, I think Cayegas is really a forward-thinking uh, group of people, um, and and they're building this line so that the brine from these desalting plants can be pumped out to the ocean. Now that out outfall line exists. The uh, Oxnard Advanced Water for Purification Facility and the Brackish Water uh, Facility, they exist. If you go up the road a little bit more, the Round Mountain Water Treatment Plant and the Camrosa Water Reclamation Facility both exist. 
I believe. The treatment plant for sure, that's a desalting plant that exists at Round Mountain. That is online. And all of these other desalters you see in the system uh, are in various stages of planning. Um, so the Oxnard Plain has a, has a serious brackish water problem, and they really are forward thinking and taking steps to, uh, to attack that problem. A lot of desalting uh, facilities in the plan with Cayegas backing them up with a line to get rid of the concentrate. There is talk about new subsurface water sources uh, in the Ojai Valley. Uh, that potential is currently being explored. There is a theory about uh, certain aquifers in mountain canyons that haven't been uh, tapped yet. Perhaps water along fault lines, perhaps water in the Ventura River corridor. That's not necessarily in the upper Ventura River basin. That could be new sources of water. And uh, some of the, the total potential estimates I've seen have been to seven to seven to 8,000 acre feet per year potential. This is, this, what needs to happen here is we need to get some exploratory wells or an exploratory well drill to find out if, uh, if these theories uh, will bear fruit. And of course, then we have the, uh, the dreaded effluent re re uh, re recycling, and that's something we really need to start thinking about. Um, it's about the same cost as desalting, and uh, we can develop storage, storage options so that the reclaimed water can be put into storage if it can't be used right away. The Ojai Valley Sanitary District is planning other uses for its discharge uh, as we speak, and those will be made uh, public, I'm sure, in the near future. And again, we need to adjust our thinking about uh, recycling of our, of our wastewater because that is a potential source of water that uh, literally goes down the drain. So now what? Uh, I think we need to continue and expand uh, our aggressive conservation me measures. We need to build in adequate capacity to the state water project tie-in. And let me stay on my soapbox a little bit about that and why, why I'm uh, so insistent and others are so insistent about building in a large capacity. There's a great article written by uh, Ray Stokes, who runs the Central Coast Water Agency. Uh, they supply water to San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties. And he wrote an article called 25 Successful Years of State Water. They've been tied into state water for 25 years. And in 2014, 2015, state water, being, literally being tied into state water, saved them. They had a lousy allocation from the state. And you're going to hear a lot of people say, well, state water is unreliable. We have no idea what the allocation is going to be. They can flip-flop this, and we'll end up with no allocation. That's not the whole issue. Uh, the Central Coast Water Agency had a very bad allocation for those two years. They went out and found and brokered, I think, for those two years total, around 30,000 acre feet of water that they brokered from rice farmers in the Sacramento area. They went up and said, you don't put in rice. I'll buy your water. They brought in that water. It wasn't as cheap as the water they, they were normally supplying, but it wasn't, it wasn't out of sight. I think they brought in that water, treated it for $746 an acre foot. So he couldn't have done that if they hadn't been tied into state waters. So you need to have the pipeline connection. And so that's why I'm pushing this so hard that get the pipeline connection, build in the capacity, you go out and hire an attorney, you hire a water broker, you find that supplemental water that's not in the that's not a part of the state allocation. You bring that water in. If you got the pipe, you can, and if you can afford the water, you can bring it in. So when push comes to shove, if you if you're going to be facing out of water or a little more expensive water, I think it's obvious what you would want to choose. At least for me, it is. Um, okay, so that'll get off my soapbox about uh, the state water tie-in. Um, and we're looking forward to, to, to funding a proof of concept of the hobos. Um, I hope that'll happen within a year. And we need to start uh, the planning process, process for stormwater capture. I'm very optimistic that that's going to start here in the city of Ojai. And it would be great to see Ojai leading the charge, uh, the city of Ojai leading the charge in the Ojai Valley for stormwater capture systems. And I think we need to put desalination, desalting, effluent recycling into a long-term and near-term planning. And of course, there's always praying for rain. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Does anyone on the council have any questions for Angelo? Uh, just one comment really quickly. I think it's um, the more we learn, the more we realize regional cooperation is essential. And for example, the regional uh, uh, East County are, in uh, the Oxnard Plain, the regional desalting line, we have opportunities like that 
on the other side of the river, but we need a regional mentality to put those, get those economies of scale in place to have those options. And I think it's also extremely important to people to realize that over the last 25 years, Mr. Stokes stated they got more water from non-state sources than from state sources because they had the plumbing. Santa Barbara would be dead if they hadn't had the pipe. We need the pipe. Well, I think just one other, if I could comment on that, Cayegas has taken it upon themselves to lead the charge, I think, in this, in this desalting program on the Oxnard Plain. And I think we need, we need to find, if we can't get somebody to do overall regional, force regional cooperation, we need to find a hero. We need to find somebody that's going to step up to the plate and lead the charge. To or find a way to work together. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. And I, ju I just had yeah. a couple comments. You, you know, uh, I'd like to. I'd like some takeaways tonight. And if anyone talks to um, anyone outside of the city, you need to use the term 30 30 30 when it comes to state water. There's an existing 30 inch line on the west end, there's two existing 30 inch lines on the east end, and we need 30 in between. Just it's real simple 30 30 30. Don't let anyone say 30 24 30 18 it's 30 30 30 that's the most important thing we take away from this the other thing is um, that I wanted to touch on and Angela again thank you so much for all the time and all the effort that you put into this and all the information that you gather and then being able to, to present it so precisely I um, I'd like to Steve if we can just put this on our website from here on in and then as we up Date this on a monthly basis. We just update what we need to, and that starts us. Um, that starts allowing the community to really recognize that yes, the city council is aware of the issue, and two, we're doing the best that we can to flex our muscle and making some changes and and creating some cooperation with other entities. And then the last thing I wanted to, to touch on was exactly what you brought up in the fact that the city of Ventura is already thinking and have put into their CIP budget bringing water from the East County to West Ventura. That started way before the state water tie-in project even came up, much less has been brought to the, uh, to, to the front burner by everyone committed to, to the 30-30-30 concept into the state water tie-in. So they, they already recognized there was a problem, that was two years ago. What I'm recognizing is most of these entities, cities, water purveyors, are out for themselves. And that the only one that's going to speak for this community is us and this council. And we need to recognize that we have some weight that we can throw around, some of us more than others. <laughs> um, but the reality is, if we don't speak up and if we don't go to city meetings if we don't go to casitas municipal water district meetings if we don't attach ourselves to this water issue countywide we're not going to be taken care of we need to be the squeakiest wheel out there and lastly state water infrastructure allows us to look for water outside of the state water system so we are not married to state water pricing because you will hear that as the argument not to tie in. It's too expensive. There are other water sources available. Santa Barbara knows it. We know it. And we're going to be looking into it. So let's keep the pressure up. And let's, Angelo, um, again, I can't say thank you enough for, for your effort and, and your time in this. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Lara. Hello, so, Angelo. Angelo, I also want to thank you, obviously, for putting this together. But I also want to thank my colleagues, Mayor Pro Tem Weirich and Randy and Councilmember Haney, because they have been championship champion this side of, of researching and trying to bring everybody together to work on this issue, which is uh, extremely important, uh, serious to address. But I also I had a question in in terms of the public. It's, it's all about educating the public on what the city is doing for uh, developing aggressive conservation measures, <coughs> who would be the person to ask these questions to? Because you have a lot of data on these slideshows, on these slides, uh, who would be the appropriate person? Would it be one of the council members or would it be yourself or? 
Well, I think you have an organization here, the Ohio Valley Green Coalition. I think they're doing a lot uh, in the way of trying to get the word out on how people can do can do their do their best for conservation. I think if they had a lot of support from the council uh, to help them get the word out, uh, however that can happen, I think that's an important part of the, of this equation. The, the stormwater capture portion of the conservation, I think, is going to need need a broader a broader approach because I think it's 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 going to affect how we treat runoff water from the city, for instance. So I guess getting the the out the word out would be utilizing possibly the Green Coalition, which we have already uh, funded in s to a certain degree on on some of the programs, and they, that is one of the programs is education on water measure. I guess uh, working with them more closely and defining. Uh, how do you answer some of these questions would be great and how you how you treat them on the website and and there there can be bulletins posted there can be recommendations posted um, and, and there just has to be a lot more information out there and encouraging the public because when it rains we need to capture every single drop that hits the ground it, the way the way we're now are now we can't afford to let a drop us escape us uh, down to the ocean if it's at all possible so I think we need to change our whole attitude our whole mentality about uh, not only conservation but how we capture that blessed rainfall when it does does hit the ground great thank Ma you mayor i have yes. one more comment on it. You, you know um we have been on this for um angel you've been on it for um over a year and i know that william and i have been on this for uh, at least six months and and i can just i can let the community know there's a lot of moving parts and the, and there isn't a week that doesn't go by that we don't learn something new I'd like to present it tonight and move it forward for the new council, but we may, we may need to think about hiring an individual, someone like Angelo here, who has the time, who can dedicate themselves to all of the information gathering that's, that's out there, attend even more meetings than what we're attending already, and be an advocate for this community through the council. So it's something we need to think about. It's something that I've been that I have personally been thinking about for months because of so much information that's out there and so much technology that you need to be able to grasp in a short amount of time and distill it and 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 bring it to the community and also go and argue on our behalf. So um, I think we need to think about that. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. We don't have a lot of time for questions from the audience, but does anybody in the public have a any question? Yeah. Come on up forward. Hi, Christine. Hi, thank you, Mayor Blatz and council persons. Um, my question is, uh, is there an environmental impact study that goes along with, for example, um, the kind of drilling that would take water out of the um, rock in the mountains, the sedimentary rock. What happens to those mountains? And also, I know that I saw you, uh, Mr. Wyrick, at one of the films that the film festival put on about the water issue. And desalination does grave harm to the environment. So I want to know if that's part of the study. Maybe somebody could answer that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, it certainly is, and uh, that's certainly, uh, I would, I would uh, if you, I, for example, Supervisor Bennett is pushing desalinization, and this is an issue that comes up constantly. This December 1st meeting is going to be interesting to see how those issues are addressed, and certainly Kiegas talks uh, at, at long length about um, uh, the importance of the environmental issues and environmental mitigation. So uh, as far as the uh, horizontal bore that was presented by the Casitas Municipal Water District, uh, that's there. In fact, I would say that one of the people that brought up this option is here tonight, and I would suggest that um, uh, Jordan, would you want to address that maybe later, or not, or now, on the environmental issue of horizontal bores? Are you calling me the father of a hobo? Uh, <laughs> uh, this man has a lot more expertise than I do to answer your question. Okay. I, I can speak to that to some degree when it's appropriate. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, Christine, Any, excellent questions that need to be answered. Anybody else with a quick question? Yeah. Um, uh, Risa Horowitz, and um, my question is: the gentleman was speaking about um, 
two alternatives. He, he was talking about desal, and the other was desalting. desalting. Can a desalting facility later be converted to desal? No. <laughs> One of the reasons is that the brine discharge from uh, desalting is of an entirely different nature than a true uh, full-blown desalinization. So the environmental mitigations are of a completely different nature. That's my understanding. I could be corrected if I'm wrong. Okay. Um, Mayor, I just I, had, I know I said I had the last call, but I had one more comment too. I just received uh, an email tonight, and I just wanted to, to share with you that uh, uh, Mr. Bennett, the District 1 supervisor for the county, um, had, had been for a long time not quite sure if he was behind the state water tie-in. He actually is a, is a long-term thinker of desalinization. And um, the word came out today that he actually supports the state water tie-in now. And, and let me tell you, let me read you real quick what he supports in it. If I don't get them mixed up, you know what? I'll pass, I'm not gonna take any more time from you, but I will say that Mr. Bennett is now 100% behind the state water tie-in. And, and as far as Casitas Municipal Water District is, I think we need to make it clear to them that it can't be either or. It can't be hobos versus tie-in. We need to look at this as a complete whole package, and they should be looking at hobos as well as their commitment to the state water tie-in. 